Hello, welcome back. Today we will be taking a look at this printer. It's the Artillery Sidewinder X1 and it has some issues. So first of all to the story of the printer. This printer was bought in late 2019, so it's actually one of the first versions of this printer. Currently they are selling the Artillery Sidewinder X1 version 4, which in theory should be more advanced than this printer. This printer was lent to me by a friend, which couldn't get the printer to properly print. Um, the prints won't stick to the build plate and the print quality was really not good. The machine as said was lent to me because I wanted to check out a huge machine, which I didn't have before and resolve these issues. The guy who actually bought the machine already also contacted uh, Materially about the issue and they already have sent him a new build plate. So we will check out if the issue is actually the build plate or another issue on the printer. First, let me show you some prints which I was able to get out this machine without any modification. So this is one of the first prints I did on this machine. This is made in Isan PLA Plus in purple. I was able to get about 10 centimeters of this print to work and then it just fell off the build plate. As you can see, um, the issue is shown on this part by these very crazy layer lines. You can see very inconsistent layers on the bottom. It gets better the higher the machine goes, but I could really feel the issue my friend has about the layers not sticking and the whole bed being uneven. I then went in and printed another print. Of course it was a Benji. I accidentally used a white filament which shouldn't be too good visible on camera, but I think you can still see it. On the bottom you can see these very crazy layer lines, very inconsistent layers. I was able to yeah, get this print out by manually adjusting just the print head, but that was only for one spot. If I would have printed this in another spot, then it probably would also have been knocked off. Also this tower right here. You can see these crazy layer lines on the bottom. Here you can see that the layer lines are very inconsistent. On the bottom right you can see that they were too close, then along the side they were too far away and then again too close. The left side is even more critical. You have high spots and you have low spots all along of the side of the bed, which cannot be really explained except in my first thought that the bed is not leveled. It's not even, it's not a plane. So I went to replace the bed. Let's see how that worked. Step one was to heat up the bed to 60 degrees Celsius and then to remove the four adjustment knobs for the leveling. For your own security, I recommend to unplug the printer and then to remove the bed, remove the springs and place it upside down on a soft surface. While the heat pad is still warm, use a spatula, start from one corner and remove the silicone heat bed and afterwards place it upside down on your soft surface. I wiped the backside of the plate down with some IPA and then placed the pad above the four pins aimed for them and started from one side to apply the pad back onto the back of the build plate. I then reassured that the silicone pad had enough contact with the build plate by pressing both parts together firmly with my hands. Afterwards I twisted the build plate back upside down. Here be sure that you untwisted the bed cable in the right direction. I then installed the springs on the bed. And also added an important upgrade, a cable strain relief. I then added also the nuts and was almost good to go. I found this strain relief on Thingiverse and I will link it in the description below so you can print your own if you want to. Only secure the part in place by the nut and two zip ties and you're good to go. A broken wire shouldn't be a problem in the future. After that I had to level the bed again. And that was when I accidentally discovered the real issue why 
the first layer won't stick. It was the y-axis. It was not the bed itself which was unleveled. It was the y-axis moving up and down. Here you can see that the bed is going down while I am moving the bed by hand. This is what I have shown previously in the first shot of my calibration print, where you can see that the lines were thicker and then closer and higher above the bed. So I had to disassemble everything again and check out the y-axis what was going wrong. So remove the bed again, which will expose the y-axis carrier. The next step is rather simple. You just have to remove these two screws. This will reduce the tension from the belt idler and then you can slide off the carriage easily. I analyzed the rollers and didn't find any obvious issue like rollers not moving, but I then discovered that some of the rollers had flat spots. There was much abrasion on the V-slot grooves. So I ended up replacing all six of these rollers with new ones. These flat spots on these rollers made the bed go up and down, as they couldn't twist correctly around their own axis. If you replace these rollers, you can also go for polycarbonate versions of these rollers. In theory, these should be more resistant to any forces applied. The real reason I think why these had flat spots was that these V-rollers have been tightened too much. They were pressing too much against the V-slot grooves and sitting there for too long. After assembling everything and re-leveling the bed, you can see that the calibration print I'm printing right now is perfectly smooth. There are no high or low spots, the bed is not moving up and down anymore and this fixed the issue for me. So this is the Benji after adjusting the bed. Um, I can definitely see some improvement over my last prints uh, before that. The bottom layer is pretty, pretty good. Um, there are some inconsistencies, um, especially here. Um, there is a cooling issue uh, also on this side because I printed it um, in this direction. Um, this, uh, the cooling fan only reaches the front area. Besides that, I'm actually quite impressed with the quality. Um, I will further need to um, set up my profile, um, tweak some extrusion parameters, I think. Um, besides that, uh, I would call it a first uh, great success. In the end, I was able to get a decent result out of this printer. And as you might already see, I did some further modifications to this printer, like a new fan duct, a new idler, a new roller, and other stuff in the future. But this will be part of a next video, where I will present some upgrades and some good guides for this printer. In the end, I will also do a full review of this machine in stock condition and in the condition it will be upgraded to because I want to print huge stuff on this printer, which should make a ton of fun. But at this point, that's it for this video, and I hope you learned something from this video. If yes, you can subscribe to my channel if you want to, ring the little bell to be notified about future videos. If you have any issues with your printer, or you need your assistance, or you have any ideas, or what else, then leave a comment in the comment section below. As for now, I want to thank you for watching, have a nice day and goodbye.